Hello, everyone. I would like to welcome everybody to the National Cybersecurity Student Association monthly webinar series. Our webinar today, title today would be What Got You Here? Won't Get You There by Dan Waddell, Managing Director of IC Squared. In this presentation, we will offer tips and guidance on how to succeed in the field of cybersecurity from the workplace perspective. In many cases, the skills you have today may not be necessarily be the ones that will help you advance both your career and help others around you accomplish your mission. Each day brings a new challenge and a new adventure. How will you decide that? Uh, at this time, I want to pass it over to Mr. Waddell. Great, thanks, Gustavo. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, hope you're having a, a good day uh, here. I'm uh, based in Alexandria, Virginia. I've been an employee of ISC Squared for about three years now. Been a CISSP since uh, 2004. Um, just a little bit about me uh, that I well, hopefully will set some context uh, for our talk today. Uh, I started in IT in 1993. I got my top secret clearance with a company called SAIC at the time. I was a system administrator, Unix administrator back in the day. Uh, and right around 9-11, I made the shift over into that time. It was pure information assurance, really the term cybersecurity haven't even, hasn't even, hadn't even uh, took hold yet. Uh, and then got my CISP in 2004. Uh, and, uh, and so currently, I am the managing director for North America uh, here for ISC Squared, which really is uh, I help uh, take care of all of our members in the U.S. and Canada uh, and, uh, and perform outreach and communications to our partners and customers uh, and to our friends uh, in the federal government. So I really appreciate your time today. Uh, let's go into the next slide. Um, we'll talk a little bit about... Uh, the agenda for today and some of the objectives. So really what we're going to talk about um, are some uh, tips and tricks on not only how, in, how to break into this field that we call cybersecurity, but then once you're in, uh, how can you continue to climb up the ladder? So we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that you can do to help pre help prepare you uh, for the cybersecurity career field. And we'll talk a little bit about now that you're in, what do you do? It's uh, it's certainly a, a crazy world each and every day. Uh, you, you wake up and there's a new threat, there's a new vulnerability. Uh, it, so it, it keeps you certainly on your toes. Uh, and then um, at some point you'll probably need to make the decision, um, am I going to stay technical or am I going to enter the world of, of, uh, of management? And so that's a decision that, uh, that, that I had to make and, and you will be faced with that eventually in your career if you haven't been already. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then once you are uh, into management, what are some of those tips and tricks that you can do um, to really help uh, prepare that next generation. So myself, I, you know, I've, I've been in this career field uh, for, for over over 20 years now, going you know, to include my IT experience. And so, um, it's it's it, I'm really focused now on on who who's going to be that next generation, kind of coming over the hill, whether it's you know folks uh, entering uh, college or whether it's career changers that are already in the career fields whether it's another vertical such as IT or finance or HR, uh, that we can then uh, help to, to recruit to, to really fill uh, this workforce gap. So next slide. All right, so, uh, and then you can go, go into the next slide again. So how, how do I break in uh, to, to this crazy uh, career field? And really when we talk about networking, um, it, it's such a valuable tool. It, is, it certainly helped me kind of coming up through the ranks there are a number of, of uh, tips and tricks that I give folks when, when they ask me, well, Dan, you know, you, what is networking? Uh, how, how can I get my name out there? How can I meet my, my, next, my next boss? I mean, what, what, is, what are some of those things that I can do? And really, I mean, events are a great way to kind of help uh, meet folks and kind of get, get your name out there. Um, obviously, here in the Washington, D.C. area, there are several events. ISC Square just had our big event. Uh, Cybersecure Gov, of course, 3CS has their event, uh, of which ISC Squared is a sponsor later this month uh, at the National Harbor. Um, but uh, obviously, it's, it's a lot more than just going to the event, right? Um, wh what I tell folks is really check and see if uh, events have a student rate, if you're a student. Uh, a lot of events, certainly ISC Squared events, have student rates. Um, if, if one is not published on the event website, uh, make some inquiries, ask around. Generally speaking, they will make sure to, to get that uh, student rate out to you. And I think in, in addition to checking out the student rate, I think another thing that you can do is review the agenda and the speaker lineup beforehand. I know myself, I've, I've spoke at a lot of events uh, across the country, and, and can, including Canada. 
Uh, and I absolutely love it when folks come up to me after my talk and engage with me. Um, it's always good to have some business cards on hand, even, even if you do not have a job. Um, I highly recommend, there are several websites out there where you can get 500 business cards for 10 bucks. Uh, really easy to do, but just at a minimum, you know, cell phone, email address. Some folks put their uh, social media accounts uh, on there. I, I would I would caution to make sure before you do that uh, that they're they're, um, they're they're safe to view by by the professional folks. Because certainly, as somebody that's hired a lot of people in my career, that is one of the things that I look at. I do, I do check out social media profiles because ultimately you're going to be. Uh, you're going to be a brand ambassador for, for that company, no matter what role that you choose. So make sure that you're presenting yourself in a professional manner. Um, obviously, LinkedIn is is a great tool uh, to network as well, and making make sure that again, even if you don't have full time experience, that you've got uh, whether it's internship or hey, you know, I've built a lab at home, or you know, I, I've I've taken some classes on on coding or or you know, vulnerability management, wh whatever it is, you know, make sure you want to highlight as much as you can. It's it's not always about um, the experience, particularly when you're breaking in, you, you want to highlight as much as you can, as best as you can. So let's go to the next slide. Now let's talk a little bit about building skills, right? So um, this this slide here, you'll notice the, the graphic there. Um, it's a hashtag, uh, women of color in tech chat. Now this is a forum that is no longer around, but um, they had a, a, a public license to be able to use stock imagery um, to uh, to really display diversity, and that's you'll see this kind of as a theme in my presentation. Because at IC Squared, we talk a lot about the workforce shortage, and that you know only between 10 and 11 percent uh, of our cyber workforce is comprised of women. And when you dive deeper into that, whether it's uh, uh, women of color or, or another particular race, or even men of color or another particular race, we don't have enough of them. So the women in in, in, in tech, the uh, women of color in tech chat. Uh, helps to promote diversity through their imagery. I just thought it was, it was a great way to start to include some of that imagery that you may not necessarily see all the time, right? We're probably used to seeing the hacker and the hoodie imagery everywhere uh, when we look at cybersecurity. And I know in the past I've been guilty of that. Um, ISC Squared is, has sometimes been guilty of that. We're really trying our best to, to improve our, our imagery. But when we talk about soft skills, right, we're, we're not just talking about um, having those skills that will prepare you for a technical job. And let me give you an example. Uh, when I was uh, a security consultant right around 9-11, and, and one of my clients, um, I was doing a vulnerability assessment for them, and I actually found a vulnerability. They, um, believe it or not, the, the client uh, had not changed their default password. Uh, it was a, an EMC uh, box, a data storage box, uh, and they had not changed their password uh, to their uh, web uh, admin portal. And so um, I was having to communicate why that was such a risk to them. And you know, I, I had to really talk my way through a couple of different layers of management. First it was, well, this, you know, this EMC box is in a bunker. Nobody's going to get to it. Well, no, that's not necessarily the case because it has an IP address and, and it is Internet facing. And then, you know, you talk to somebody else and it was like, well, we, we didn't assign a host name. It's just an IP address. And so then I had to communicate, well, anybody um, with decent skills could, could run an NMAP scam or at the time, you know, NMAP, Nessus, whatever tool that you can use and, and find those vulnerabilities and be able to exploit them. So it's not just having the tech skills, it's being able to translate what you find as part of your technical discovery and relaying that to the mission. So a lot of times when, I, when folks are asking me advice on their career, and what companies to work for, I tell them, look, do, do, your, do the research on the company and figure out why is cybersecurity important to them. It could be a bank, it could be a hospital, it could be a financial uh, or, a, or a government agency. It, the vulnerabilities will be the same throughout, but each sector has its own unique mission. And so you need to be able to relay that in, in communication terms exactly why those vulnerabilities will impact their mission, whatever it may be. So, so definitely want to preach the importance of not just, soft, uh, not just tech skills, but enhancing those soft skills as well. Next slide. Uh, mentorship. So mentorship is really big. This is up in the background here is a picture of myself and one of my teammates here. Um, anytime we have somebody here on the team 
um, that, that does something well, we want to recognize them and, and provide that mentorship uh, throughout. And so as you are starting out in, in your career, it's very important for you to be able to find that mentor that you can go to and ask for advice. Um, and, and really this applies to, to every level of your career. I mean, myself as a manager, I, st I still have mentors. I still seek mentors out. But particularly when you were starting out, it's very important. Um, it's, just a, it's just a sounding board. Um, and, and, and there are a lot of folks out there, and there are a lot of, of great mentor programs out there. I'll, I'll give a quick plug, plug to my friends um, at ICMCP. It's the International Consortium of Minority Cybersecurity Professionals. They run a very good mentor program. I've signed up to be a a mentor there. You can find out more at icmcp.org. But um, and of course, IIC Squared has a lot of members um, uh, that, that would be more than happy to act as mentors as well. So, so definitely can't stress that enough. Uh, find a mentor and, and have him or her be able to, to help provide that sounding board as, you, uh, as you, you, you go about your career. Next slide. Okay, so now, now you've, you're in. You've got a job in cybersecurity. Now, now what's next? So next slide here. Let's talk a little bit about this quote, right? With great power comes great responsibility. I know a lot of folks, you know, attribute this to Spider-Man, but this was actually Voltaire, a French philosopher that, that came out with this quote uh, uh, a couple of hundred years ago. And really, you know, when you, we talk about cybersecurity, there are so many powerful tools out there. And you notice in the background, some of you probably recognize that's a pineapple. And what a pineapple does, it's basically uh, a network device that will allow um, a, a pen tester to perform man-in-the-middle attacks. So, for example, setting this up uh, and, and, and naming it Starbucks as a Wi-Fi access point and having folks kind of log in. Um, obviously, in the right hands, uh, in terms of a white hat hacker, this, is, this can be a very powerful tool to help organizations secure their own infrastructure. It was a, it was a product that, that I've used in the past, my teams have used in the past, and there are a lot of great tools out there that will do that. But obviously in the wrong hands, uh, they can become bad. So you want to make sure that as you are starting your career out in cybersecurity, um, that you ha you you continue to build and enhance your reputation and build trust uh, in, in terms of the good guys. Um, the, the saying goes, right, uh, it, it takes a year to build trust and a second to lose it, and it, that, that is so appropriate when we talk about cybersecurity. So, um, so please, please keep that in mind um, as you start to, to uncover uh, some of the great tools that are out there to help uh, make our jobs easier. Next slide. So, um, so for those folks, uh, if we have any INC Squared members uh, in the audience today, you may recognize this. This is actually one of our ethics canons. It's actually the first canon. We have four canons. So um, a lot of folks ask me, you know, hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm interested to get my CISSP for, from INC Squared. Um, I can just take the exam and pass it and I'm good, right? And, and I said, no, that's not, that's not what it's just all about. Um, obviously, there's the experiential component to ha having a CISP or any of our other certifications, but ethics plays a really big role. And so when we look at this quote, right, it really goes back to that point I, I said about building trust and keeping it and being on, on the good guy side. Um, there are a lot of folks out there um, that, that really uh, try to, to, blur, to blur the lines in terms of ethics, and it's something that here at IC Squared we take very seriously. Uh, we actually have an ethics board. Uh, that, that handles complaints, um, whether you know, it, it be any, any member that, that's out there, um, if someone kind of gets a wind of them acting ethically or uh, doing something against any one of our ethics canons, uh, you know, there, there's a reporting mechanism for that. But I just stress the, the, the point of um, acting in an ethical manner and making sure that you, you continue to, to do good and act on the good side because um, that, that's the reputation that you're going to want really moving forward in your career. Next slide. So, um, yeah, if you can go back one, there we go. Um, so cybersecurity challenges are, are solved by, by people, um, not just technology. And the, the one thing that I really want to stress here is that uh, we all need technology. I, I showed you a slide a couple, couple of slides ago about some, some really powerful and cool technology that helped me do my job. So I'm not, I'm not here to bash technology at all. I love technology. I'm a techie geek. But at the same time, 
um, a poorly configured uh, technical tool in the wrong hands is going to cause more harm than good. So um, know that when you are entering this field, people are going to look to you um, as the smartest guy or the smartest girl in the room to be able to say, okay, great. Um, out of all these tools that we have, uh, which, which ones are going to be the most effective at lowering my risk? Which, which ones of these tools are going to be the ones that, that help me uh, keep the company off the cover of Wall Street Journal? So you're, you're, you're going to be asked to kind of weigh in and give advice on this technology and, and really help solve some of these, these big problems. I mean, the bottom line is to, in today's world, we're in a period of rapid change. And, and leaders must have passion for improving the world, particularly when we are focused with the types of problems that we are seeing each and every day in the, in, in the cyber realm. So um, keep, keep that in mind and, and also know that um, not one person is going to be able to solve a problem. Uh, the, the hardest problems in the world are, are, are best solved when you're with a group of people that can approach the problem for a number of different angles and be able to discuss it and, and work out a problem and solve it. So uh, try not to do things on your own. Um, I, I always try to, to around, surround myself with the smartest people in the room and making sure that we attack the problem that way. Okay, next slide. So let's talk a little bit about uh, some statistics that are out there when we talk about um, the, the top skills that are prioritized by millennials and also the top skills that are prioritized by the folks that are doing the hiring. Uh, so this, uh, this study uh, is, is, was conducted by um, our Center for Cyber Safety and Education. It's our philanthropy arm that focuses on scholarships and research and internet safety programs. Uh, it's, it's the largest study in the world. Uh, the, when we ran this study and we released the data at RSA uh, earlier this year, this data contained, uh, um, had over 20, almost 20,000 respondents uh, as part of the, the, the data block. So when we look at here, and if you actually look on the left side, so the folks that were answering the mail here in terms of the millennial generation, so we're talking 20s to probably mid-30s, it's the largest workforce now. Uh, in, 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 our, in our realm, and these are the top skills that they think they're going to need. Cloud computing, risk assessment, uh, governance, risk, and compliance, InfoSec. And down at the bottom, uh, communications and analytical skills, that they're really not that important. But then when you look on the right-hand side, and we ask the same question to the folks that were doing the hiring, look at the communications and the analytical skills. They're at the top. So there's, there's a breakdown there between what, what the folks are looking for in terms of hiring and what the candidates think is important. And so obviously from IC Square's perspective, we need to do a better job to educate the workforce to make sure that, again, it's not just tech, it's also about communication and having that holistic and programmatic view of cybersecurity across a number of different domains. That's, that's really what the hiring managers are looking for. So, um, definitely keep that in mind uh, as you go through interview processes. You're undoubtedly uh, going to be asked to do some sort of tech screen. Um, typically, in my experience, that's, that's the first one. Either the first or the second interview is usually a tech screen. And then once you get past that, then, it's, then you're going to be assessed on, uh, on your communication and your analytical skills. Uh, I, I tell folks all the time, uh, the tech skills are going to get you the interview and get you to the next round. Your soft skills, your communication skills are the ones that are going to get you the job and get you the promotion. So keep, please keep that in mind. More information on this study is at our website, imcybersafe.org. We got a ton of data from this survey, not only from millennials, but from women, um, the U.S. government, which we released last month. A lot of great data here, so, uh, so definitely check it out. Next slide. So be visible, be vocal. Um, this is, again, this is another, um, another great image that, that I borrowed from the, the women of color and tech chat folks. Um, 
you're going to have a number of opportunities in your career where you're going to have an ability to, to speak up and be visible and be vocal. So uh, a lot of times that can be in a conference room with, with a bunch of executives and a bunch of decision makers and ultimately someone is going to turn to you and ask you for your opinion and that's, that's going to be your, your opportunity to really step up and be visible and be vocal. So uh, I tell people all the time you know, that those are the types of folks that, that, are, that are probably going to make uh, the biggest impact, um, and you know, and it's not always uh, being able to, to to kind of step up in a public setting. Uh, a lot of times, there are the folks behind the scenes that are doing great work, and then obviously, it's up to to the leaders and the managers to make sure that they're getting recognition other way. Because you know, ultimately, we have to we uh, we as leaders, we know that there are introverts and there are extroverts, and some folks aren't always going to be the ones that kind of want to step up and, and take the spotlight. So uh, I, I say this kind of with a grain of salt because I know this may not apply to everyone, but but ultimately, you're going to have your opportunity to make your mark, and whether that's kind of behind the scenes and making sure things are happening smoothly or whether it's you kind of stepping up and, 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 and being vocal uh, about your opinion and say, hey, hey, listen, you know, we're, we're a month behind pine patches uh, in, in, in our dev environment. We have to, we have to you know, pick that up. Uh, being able to really make your point um, is going to go a long way uh, moving forward. Okay, next slide. So this is actually a quote from my mom. Um, my mom uh, print, printed this out and gave it to me when I was a kid, and it's just one of those things that, that stuck. And, and I've got a few quotes that, that I help to not only inspire myself, but inspire my team every once in a while. Um, and again, kind of going back to what we do as cybersecurity professionals in our career and what this, what this job is like. Um, it's, it's crazy. There, there are going to be, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like crisis Communication 101, and where they're, they're in a breach environment, where your company has been breached, and and you're you're on you, it's either you or your team that's going to be responsible for walking them through getting out of that breach. How do we respond? How do we communicate to our users? How do we communicate to to shareholders and stakeholders, et cetera? Um, it's going to be those times when you're going to be measured on how you react to the crisis, and if you can behave like a duck and keep calm and unruffled on the surface, but paddle like crazy underneath, that's, that's typically when folks are going to remember you and say, wow, uh, that, per that person could re really handle themselves in a crisis. And so I say and that, that doesn't always apply to every single career field, but it certainly applies to cybersecurity, so please keep that in mind. Next slide. Okay. So, so now we, we, uh, we want to talk a little bit about how can I ascend up the proverbial career ladder. And again, I want to I want to caution or maybe a little caveat here on I, I understand that some folks um, are not concerned about uh, getting promoted all the way up to the manager level, but there are going to there's going to be that opportunity where you want to maybe kind of carve out your own path, maybe do something different, uh, maybe stay technical. These tips apply to all of that, so don't necessarily think that, oh, I've, I've got to ascend. Uh, that's not the case, but if, if, that's, if that's your, uh, your desire, then, then, then certainly there, there are some principles here that I think then, that can apply across the board, and they certainly helped me uh, as I went through my career. So next slide. So I touched on this earlier, work with people smarter than you, uh, don't be the smartest person in the room. Uh, it's, it's something that I espouse each and every day here at ISC Squared. I think, uh, you know, when I look at the team that I've hired, uh, I've, I've hired folks that are smarter than me because uh, I, I know I'm not going to be able to answer all the questions. I can't be an expert in everything. And so, you know, the picture in the background here is just, uh, it's, uh, it's our U.S. Government Advisory Council here at ISC Squared, and, and, and these men and women, um, hold executive level positions at a number of federal government agencies here in the Washington, D.C. area, uh, and they inspire me each and every day. And, and, um, and a lot of them are my mentors and my sounding boards, right? If I, if I, can, if I come across something that I know I can't solve, you know, this is a great network to be able to tap into. So I encourage you uh, to kind of keep that in mind as you, as you move uh, out and about in your career. Um, whether it's in a managerial focus or, or if, it's a, if it's a tech team or, or a developer's team, 
um, that 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 you're with you're with a group that uh, that brings different perspectives and that that is smarter uh, at certain things than, than you are, and that's just really just going to help you uh, be a smarter person as well. Next slide. Learn through the eyes of a child. So this is actually a picture of my son, uh, one of my sons here, Jason, my ten-year-old son. Um, we were at B Sides Nova uh, a few months ago, uh, out towards Dulles Airport. And there was uh, a 3D printing station, uh, and these guys here at, at Nova Labs, they were fantastic. They were actually uh, showing my son how to print uh, a prosthetic hand, uh, printing out a, actually a, a hand uh, that could be used um, by students or, or any, anybody that, uh, that, that needed a prosthetic hand. And I believe one of them was actually featured uh, in, a, in a news segment here uh, locally not too long ago. But, um, but I saw Jason and I saw my son, I'm like, wow, you know, um, he was so excited about it. Uh, that's the way we need to be in our everyday lives when we want to learn something. When we see something that inspires us, when we see something that excites us like that, uh, we, we really want to be able to grasp it and, and use that to help motivate us. I, I can't tell you um, the number of comments that I got when I posted this picture on my social media page. Um, and and it, it, it helped to, to inspire other people as well. But, uh, you know, inevitably, you're going to need to pick, you know, cybersecurity is so broad. It, it really, there are so many different things you can do in this field, whether it's risk management or privacy or, or red teaming, blue teaming, or security engineering, app development, cloud security, you name it. You just, there is, there is going to be a passion. There's going to be a, an angle here in cybersecurity that you can take that is going to strike a chord with you, that will stick with you, and that will get you as excited as my son Jason was with this 3D printer. That's ultimately what you want to be able to achieve and find to, to really get you going and motivate you to, to, to do, do great things. So always try to, try to see, see the world through the eyes of a child and, and really be excited and passionate about what you do. Next slide. So seek the challenging project. Um, you know, when we talk a lot about personal growth and professional growth in the career of cybersecurity, um, this one is, is pretty, pretty easy to do for those folks that, that really want to get after it. Because like I said, there is something new every day. Um, uh, the, the wanna cry. Um, the, the, that was that was a relatively new thing that that, that uh, uh, caused a lot of folks, maybe not necessarily in the federal government, but certainly um, across the world, uh, to, to kind of jump in and tackle it. Um, th there's going to be a new one coming up uh, inevitably uh, down the road. Um, it, it always happens, uh, and, and a lot of times those are the the, the quick response kind of uh, breach response uh, projects. Uh, that, that need folks to really kind of jump in and help solve from a number, number of different angles, uh, including communications, including, um, you know, patching, including closing vulnerabilities, including, you know, picking apart malware, ransomware to look for indicators of compromise, all, all that good stuff. There's always going to be, be a role that you can play in that. Um, but, but seek that challenging project. Seek something that's going to really kind of help expand that scope of what you're, you're, what you're doing now and continue to add skills to what you already have, because it is so easy to, for your skills to get stale if you just stick where you are. So look for that challenging project, look for that next thing where you can kind of get in and, and really and, 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 get, and be challenged. And that's really how, how folks uh, learn and build skills ultimately. Next slide. So know your audience when you communicate. So obviously I'm here today, I'm, ta I'm, I'm talking mostly with students, right? And, and so I, as I was preparing my notes today, um, I, I wanted to tailor my comments to that. I, I gave a similar uh, talk to some professionals that were you know, maybe more in the mid to, to senior level uh, a couple of months ago. So, so you know, I had, I had to make some adjustments. So the point is here, always know your audience when you're communicating, whether it's um, to, to senior level folks or whether it's to maybe a more technical group or maybe it's to users. Um, put yourself uh, in their shoes and then work on your messaging that way. Uh, when we talk about communication, I think uh, sometimes uh, 
as technical folks and, and as somebody that, you know, when I was just purely technical, I didn't always keep this in mind. I always just said, well, look, you know, users are stupid and they just need to figure it out. But, but when you put yourself in the, in the shoes of a user, you kind of kind of see their pain. And for me, it was when um, my parents got older or my kids were growing up and I actually had to show them and teach them, and boy, you talk about getting patience uh, and wanting to build your, your, your skills of patience. Uh, you know, try, try being the, I'm, and I'm sure there are a lot of folks on the call that have, that have gone through this as well, um, working, working their parents or their children through, through you know, kind of help desk 101 types of skills. That, that builds a lot of character and it builds a lot of patience. And it taught me a lot about how to communicate with others. So just, just keep that in mind. Next slide. Okay, so now you're, you're, you've decided, yes, uh, I, I'm, I'm in management. Um, uh, I am now responsible for other people. Um, I'm scared, oh crap, now what do I do? So let's, let's talk a little bit about some of those considerations uh, now that you've, you've entered the world of management. Uh, next slide. Um, so a lot of times when uh, managers are asked to, to hire folks and bring folks on and, and be a brand ambassador, uh, I think sometimes uh, people forget ha that promoting their own culture within their company uh, is very, very important. And so um, I've, I've been blessed. I've worked with some fantastic companies. Again, started out with SAIC. I've spent some time at Deloitte and Touche, you know, kind of some big four companies as well. Certainly, ISC Squared has tremendous culture. It's a global culture. It's a diverse culture. Um, but so when you are when you are a manager and you're responsible for for, for leading and, and hiring and onboarding other people, it's very important that 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 not only are you promoting your culture, but your culture is promotion worthy. And when I when I say that, I mean you, you have to be able to, to not only know that your culture is, is worthy of your own staff, but it's something that you're going to, be, you're going to not only sell, but, but get that buy-in from that, from that person that wants to ultimately join your team and work for you. So in an interview process, uh, so just to kind of give you an example, right, so ISC Squared, uh, yes, CISSP, that's our bread and butter, but guess what, we're not just about certifications. We're, we are also very um, just fanatical about inspiring a safe and secure cyber world. That's our vision statement. And whether that's through scholarships or internet safety, you know, the program that we have, you know, teaching kids about internet safety, that, that's, that's part of it. And, and, and I think a lot of times, you know, when I've talked to folks that want to come work for me or come work for ISC Squared, when I've shared pieces of our culture, they've latched onto it. You know, wow, I want to work for that company because they're doing good work. Like, I know I'm going to do good work, and I know, you know, it'll be exciting, but the company is doing good work. That's, that's, I, I want to be a part of that. I want to do good work, too. So, so again, promote your culture, but before that, make sure that your culture is promotion worthy and that, it, that you're going to be able to not only sell it, but deliver it. Because guess what? Um, if you're selling something and it's not 100%, um, authentic. Uh, when those folks come in, it's going to be a revolving door. They're just going to turn around and walk right, to, walk right out. So uh, be, be wary of that. Next slide. So uh, and again, diversity is kind of a theme here. Um, a lot of times, particularly early in my career, I created job recs in a vacuum. Like I was like, and, and because I was, I was the hiring manager. So I, I built the job rec. I was the only one that did it. Um, I, I threw it together and I said, okay, post it and let's go. Um, and you know what, um, not, when I did that initially in my career, I noticed that my pool uh, wasn't as broad and as diverse or, or maybe did not bring in as many candidates as I would like. So now today, uh, what I really stress is that for those folks that are in a uh, position to hire, that they are actually developing requisitions um, in conjunction with other teams, other departments, other people of different minds and different vision. So you're going to get that, that job requisition that really goes out and kind of captures what you're looking for and, and really opens it up to a very broad range of candidates. I'll give you an example. Um, uh, when I, uh, really early on, um, 
but we, in, in the 90s, sorry, it was very, very much a tech culture kind of thing where, um, you know, believe it or not, there were interviews that were conduct, conducted in bars or, you know, and, you know we'd bring them in and, and we'd play, you know, ping pong at a ping pong table and kind of conduct interviews that way. It was very much what I call a bro culture. Um, and guess what? That, not everybody's into that. And so you, you need to be able to, to, to have a, a consistent uh, hiring uh, structure that's open to everyone and that it's not always just about you know, bringing, bringing on the rock star or the cyber ninja. It's, it's, it could be, you know, hey, working with somebody that, that, um, that needs a little bit more of a flexible work schedule. You know, maybe they're a single mom. Maybe they're a single dad. You know, maybe they, you know, they can't be in the office from 9 to 5 every day, but they can still do their job remotely. A lot of, we have a lot of collaborative, collaboration tools out there today that can do that. So just, just be wary of that. And, and, we, and remember, the, the better job rec that you create uh, outside of that vacuum, the, the broader your pool is going to be. Next slide. So again, I talked earlier about um, not only needing a mentor early on in, in your career, but seeking additional men mentorship when you're further along in your career, and then giving back, right? So we won't really want to talk about uh, when you're in a position then to give back, you know, hey, listen, I had some great mentors. Now it's my, my, my time to really step up and, and give back. Um, we, 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 you definitely need that. And again, uh, my mentors, I, I've, I've had the same mentors, um, some of the same mentors that I've had for, for several years. Uh, and every once in a while, I'll, I'll maybe add a new one uh, or two, depending on um, if, if that person has a particular strength in an area that I know that I'm weak in, uh, that I want to improve upon, um, that I'm, I'm going to consult with, with him or her to, to, to strengthen myself, and then, and then boom, be able to, to give back. So uh, that's, that's really what it's all about. Next slide. And so, you know, as we uh, start to, to wrap up here, and I, I want to leave some time for, for folks that, that may have some questions, um, th there's always going to be after that big project or, or, you know, you've gotten through that breach, you know, before the next one, you're going to have a pause and you're going to have an opportunity to kind of step back and celebrate the successes and, and, and unwind and have a little bit of fun. Bit of fun. That, that's so important, uh, particularly in cybersecurity, because again, it seems like this is a career that, that oftentimes it's, it's moving so fast you don't have a chance to do that. But I really stress, and it's something you know, at IIC Squared, we have uh, what's called uh, our ISLAs, our, our Information Security Leadership Awards Program, and you may see in the background there on, on the right-hand side, that's Devin Bryan. Um, who, um, who was a previous award winner. He's now the CISO for the Federal Reserve Bank uh, up in the New York, New Jersey area. Um, the awards program is something that we do at least once a year um, and sometimes more than that, depending on who the audience is. But it gives folks a chance to really sit back and celebrate the, the successes of what we've done, uh, particularly here in the federal government of Washington, D.C. It seems like the only times the cybersecurity folks get recognized is when something bad happens. So again, it's very important to recognize the good stuff too, and have fun. Uh, you know, particularly when you're when you're somebody that's leading a team, uh, it's really good to every once in a while, you know, just kind of take a break, uh, recognize successes. It could be as simple as getting a ten dollars Starbucks gift card across the street, and you see somebody that's done a fantastic job, you know, walking up to them and just saying thank you. Here, here's the cup of coffee's on me. Um, thank, we we appreciate you so much. Uh, being able to do that, uh, I think, speaks wonders, and it and it it certainly helps create that team culture, uh, and 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 gives folks a, a sense of, of true appreciation. So uh, definitely definitely keep that in mind. All right, what do we got here? Next slide. So um, we've got uh, looks like we've got about 20 minutes left. Um, here is my contact information. Um, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. I have a Twitter. Uh, there's my email address. Uh, there's also the, the website for both ISC Squared uh, and our Center for Cyber Safety and Education at imcybersafe.org. Um, and um, I'm, I'm always available if folks want to reach me offline, it may, if there's anything that they would like to, to ask, uh, whether it's ISC Squared related or just cyber workforce related in general. And again, I'm here locally in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, I'm happy to chat. So, um, so Gustavo, uh, thank you. I'll hand it back over to you. Yes, thank you for uh, your presentation. And if anybody has any questions, we could answer some of those right now. You can either, uh, I would uh, type them in the chat if you could. Oh, 
questions? So, so Gustavo, while we, we may wait, wait for a second to see if we get any others, I, I also, you know, want to mention, since we do have a lot of students on here, uh, we, we do have an academic program that we're putting together for schools, so for, for those folks that, that may be interested in pursuing their certification, whether it's a CISSP or, or any one of our other certifications, uh, you know, please reach out to us, we'd be more than happy to connect, and again, we will be at the 3CS conference uh, coming up later in June, we will have uh, uh, folks there. Um, at the conference, I'll be speaking there as well. So, um, so definitely, if you have any interest whatsoever in IC squared or any of our certifications, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. All right, we have one question. So, how does one go about networking in the cyber jobs in the Tampa Bay area? Ah, so if, yeah, if you're, if you're in, um, so I, I assume you're talking about Silicon Valley out in California. Um, that's. I mean, that's one of the best areas to network in, absolutely. Um, the great thing about that area, and I've been out there several times, uh, is there are a number of different meetups uh, and chapters uh, that, that uh, offer like a, kind of a small, intimate venue. Um, I can certainly send you some, some folks to get in touch with over there. Um, ISC Squared um, has a Bay Area chapter. They host monthly events and kind of mixers and things like that. But uh, a lot of times, you know, the Googles uh, and, and the Intels uh, and the Apples of the world will, will also have, uh, you know, these meetups where uh, the community will kind of open their doors and say, hey, look, let's talk about, you know, problems and solutions and kind of get to know you and, and uh, all kinds of stuff. And obviously the big, the big event uh, out there is RSA. Um, that's, you know, over 40,000 uh, cybersecurity professionals from all over the world uh, trek to RSA each and every year. And I think RSA team is scheduled to, to be in April uh, of next year. Uh, ISC Squared will, will have a presence there as well. So definitely, uh, uh, I would definitely check that event out uh, as well. It's, it can be really big and intimidating. And again, you know, there are some smaller events that you can go to, the chapters and the like. Um, but um, but if you were, if you want to kind of check out everything and be absolutely wowed, uh, definitely check out RSA. All right. So can a student with three three years of experience, CHFI, Security Plus, and CA certification, and MS in Information Security, uh, appear for a CISSP? So what would, what would be the requirements? Are there any um, uh, certifications or experience that they could use towards the CISSP? So so the great news about um, our associate of CISSP program is that you do not need the five years of experience, right? So if we, we just look at, I, I want to be a full CISSP member, there is that experiential requirement of five years of full-time experience or four years of full-time experience with a degree. So it sounds to me like this person has three plus a degree. They're probably a year away from getting, uh, from being a CISSP member. However, anybody can sit for the CISSP exam. And if you do not meet the experience requirements and you pass the exam, you are what's called an associate. And so you're still part of the IC squared family. Uh, you're still part of the network. You get, uh, you get, you get some benefits and, and you get access to, to discounts on training and things like that. And then once you, you are an associate, then that clock starts. And if you're, let's say for this person, if they have three years plus a degree, then a year later, they would automatically become a full CISSP. All right. So we have a follow-up. Is having five years uh, experience in risk management and physical security and non-IT experience fulfills prerequisites? So I would uh, I would encourage folks to look at the the eight domains um, of the CISSP. So as long as you have, so let's say uh, for example, this person has five years and and no degree. Um, so as long as they have five years of combined experience in two of the eight domains that's listed on our website, just go to isc2.org slash CISSP, you get a complete listing of the domains. As long as they have five years of experience in two of, at least two of those eight, then yes, uh, they, they, they qualify. All right, so as far as the CS, CISSP certification, considering the vast amount of content out there, what, what is the best study material do you recommend? So I'm a little bit biased, so certainly as an employee of ISC Squared, uh, I would say make sure that you are taking official ISC Squared training and purchasing official ISC Squared books. 
Uh, we have a number of resources listed on our website. You can certainly contact me. I will send you a list. Um, the great news about, um, uh, about some of the stuff that's coming out lately, we now have uh, apps for Android uh, and Apple. Uh, we have um, varying uh, types of training, whether it's instructor-led, live online, on-demand. Um, again, the books, the books are also a great resource. They can be, you know, soft Kindle uh, books or also hard copy books. If you still, like me, like to break out the highlighter and take notes in the margins every once in a while, I'm old school, I still do that. Um, I would say just, just look for the ISC Squared official uh, tag, uh, and those, those were the ones that certainly I would recommend to help you prepare. As far as the degree, uh, removing one year from the five total years, does an advanced degree like a master's remove any more years? So, uh, the, the, so the if you look at as long as the degree, uh, so it's only it, it's still one year, regardless of whether it's a, a four year or an advanced degree. You can't so having a master's doesn't subtract an additional year. Uh, you can only uh, substitute one year of experience. So for the CISSP, you would still need four years of full-time experience. But again, um, if you do not have that experience, you can take the exam, and if you pass it, you're an associate, and then you can start the clock right there and, and, and accrue the experience from there. All right, sounds great. Uh, do we have any more questions? All right, well, I'd like to thank everyone. Um, on behalf of the National Cybersecurity Student Association, I'd like to thank uh, Dan Waddell and IC Square for their presentation today. Uh, for more information about the Student Association, please go to cyberstudents.org. Also, this webinar will be placed on our YouTube channel. And this concludes our presentation for today. Thanks, everybody. See ya.